In the last lecture, I have given you the theoretical explanation of minimization of DFA and we also learned why is minimization of DFA required. So in this lecture, we will be trying to understand practically about minimization of DFA using an example. All right, so here we have an example DFA in which I have five states A, B, C, D, E. So our task is to minimize this DFA. That is, I want to design another DFA which performs the same kind of task, but I want to use the minimum number of states possible. So here I have five states and now I want to try to design it using lesser number of states. So let's see how we can do this. So the first step in doing this is to draw the state transition table for this DFA. So here I have drawn the state transition table for this DFA. We have five states A, B, C, D and E and A is the starting state or the initial state and E is the final state. And on getting inputs 0 and 1, these are where these states go to. Now we have to perform the minimization of this DFA. So in order to do, in order to do that, how we have to start is we have to start with the zero equivalence then we'll go to one equivalence two equivalence and so on so the first step is to write down the zero equivalence equivalence so how do we write the zero equivalence in order to write down the zero equivalence it's very simple you have to just write the non final states together as one set and you have to write the final states as another set. So here what are my non-final states? A, B, C and D. So I will make this as one set. A, B, C and D. And what are my final states? Here I have only one final state that is E. So this is the first step of writing the zero equivalence. So it is very easy to write the zero equivalence. Just write the non-final states as one set and the final states as another set. Okay, so that's it about zero equivalence. Now let's come to one equivalence. One equivalence. Now how do we write this one equivalence? For writing the one equivalence, you have to look at this row of zero equivalence and you see that these four states are in one set. Now you have to check if these states are one equivalent to each other. So first we'll check for A, B, then we'll continue. So how do we do that? Suppose you're checking for A, B. You have to check in the transition table where does A and B go on getting inputs 0 and 1. And if you see that the states to which A and B goes on getting particular inputs 0 and 1, if they fall in the same set, if those states fall in the same set as this, in this zero equivalence row, then they are said to be one equivalent to each other. All right, that may seem a little difficult to understand, but it will become very easy to understand when I show it here with example. So now I am going to check if A and B are one equivalent to each other. Let me check for A and B. So in order to check for A and B, I come to this table and see a and B, where does it go on getting input 0 and 1? A on getting input 0, it goes to B. B also on getting input 0, it goes to B. So if they go to the same states, then it is okay. Alright, all they are one equivalent. But the condition is not complete, you have to check for 1 also. So A on getting input 1, where does it go? It goes to C. And B on getting input 1, where does it go? It goes to D. So C and D. So now you have to come to this row and check if C and D fall in the same set or not. So we see that here C and D, they belong to this same set. So A and B are one equivalent. So I will put them together in one set in this one equivalent row A, B. Okay. Now the next one I have to check is for C. So we know that A and B are one equivalent to each other. We found here already that A and B are one equivalent to each other. So you can check C with either A or B. 
because we know that this A and B are already one equivalent. So you can check C with either A or B. So let me check it with A. I'll check A and C. So come to this table A and C. A and C. On getting input 0, where does A go? It goes to B. On getting input 0, where does C go? It also goes to B. So they go to the same states. So that is OK. Now let's check for 1. A on getting input 1, it goes to C. And C also on getting input 1, it goes to C. So that is also same. So whenever it is uh, going to the same states, you don't have to worry. You just confirm that they are equivalent to each other. So C is also one equivalent to both. A and B. Okay, now the next one I have to check is for D. Now I can check D with either A, B, or C because we already found that A, B, C are one equivalent to each other. So let me check D with C. You can check with uh, A or B also, it's okay, but let me check with C. So C and D come to this table C and D. C and D on getting input 0, where does it go? It goes to B. B. So both are same, it's fine. Now on getting input 1, where does C and D go? C goes to C and D goes to E. C and E. Now check if C and E fall in the same set or not in here. We see that C belongs to this set, but E belongs to another set. So C and E does not belong to the same set. So C and D are not one equivalent to each other. So D is not one equivalent to C. So if it is not one equivalent to C, it will not be equivalent to B nor to A. Right? So I have to close this and make a separate set for D now. Okay? And E I write as it was before. Okay, now we are done with one equivalence. Now the next one is two equivalents. Two equivalents. Now, in order to check for two equivalents, you have to use this row. Okay. For one equivalence, we used the row of zero equivalents. But for two equivalents, you will have to use the row for one equivalence. So, whenever you check for the equivalence, you have to check the row just above it. So, for this, I have to check this row. Okay. Now, here, what are the states which we should check? We have to check A, B, and C. We don't have to check for D and E anymore because they are a separate set by themselves and they cannot be combined with any other sets anymore. So D and E you don't have to check anymore. What you have to check is for A, B and C. So first of all let me check for A and B. A and B on getting input 0 it goes to B, B. Fine. Same set, same states, no problem. And A and B on getting input 1 where does it go? It goes to C and D. Now check if C and D belongs to the same set or not. C belongs to this set and D belongs to this set. Now we see that C and D does not belong to the same set. So A and B are not two equivalent to each other. So I have to write A here and I have to form a separate new set for B now because they are not two equivalent to each other. Okay, now I finished for A and B. Now I have to check for C. Now here we see that A and B are separate. So I don't know whether C will be two equivalent to A or to B. So I have to check separately. So let me first check for A and C. A and C, whether they are, they are two equivalent or not. A and C. On getting input 0, where does it go? It goes to B and B. Same states, no problem. And on getting input 1, A and C, where does it go? It goes to C, C. Both goes to the same states. So a and C are two equivalent to each other. So I can put C in this set. So B is now a separate set. D I'll write it down as it was. And E also I write it down as it was. Okay. Now we have finished two equivalents. Now coming to the next one that is three equivalents. equivalents. Now in order to check for three equivalents what we have to do? We have to check this row. We have to use this row now of two equivalents because that is the row just above this three equivalents. Okay now I don't have to check for B, D and E because they are 
three separate sets and I cannot combine them with anything. Now I have to only check for A and C. Let's check for A and C. A and C. On getting input 0, where does A go? It goes to B. And C, where does it go? C also goes to B. So same states, it's okay. And on getting input 1, where does A and C go? A goes to C, B also goes to C. So again, we got the same states. So they are one, uh, 3 equivalent to each other. So I can write A and C together. And I'll write the rest of the things down as they are because I don't have to check for them anymore. They form their own separate sets. Okay. Now, if you observe carefully, you see that these two equivalents and three equivalents, the result that we got for them are the same. Here we see AC as one set, then BDE. Here also we see AC as one set and BDE. So, when you find that two rows consecutively are giving the same result that means it is time to stop the process you can end the process you don't have to continue further now if you continue for three four equivalents five equivalents or up to n equivalents you will always get this same answer all right so now you can stop the process and now you can draw the dfa so here we see that a and c are a single state now these two can be combined and they can be formed as a single state ac is one state and b is another state d is another state and e is another state now i have one two three four states before how many states we had one two three four five now i minimized my dfa and i got four states i can design the same dfa using four states so let me draw the state transition diagram for this for this let me just bring this table down because we need to look at this table for drawing so the same uh, transition table which we used above i will draw it here okay so i have just copied down the same transition table as above this is the same thing i have not changed anything now we will design the dfa the minimal dfa that we have obtained over here so here ac will be one single state okay AC is one single state and also since in the previous table A was the initial state and so here we have A so this AC will now be my initial state okay and then the next state I have is B I have another state B over here and then D and E so let me draw D over here and then I have E and E was my final state in the previous table. So here also E will be my final state. Okay. Now, let's see. AC on getting input AC, this AC on getting input 0 and 1, where does it go? So for AC, I have to check in this table A and C. So A on getting input 0, it goes to B. C on getting input 0 also, it goes to B. So we have designed it in such a way that this if you check for AC both A and C on getting input 0 or 1 it will go to the same states okay so it goes to state B on getting input 0 so on getting input 0 I'll send it to state B this is on getting input 0 okay and then coming to the next one on getting input 1 where does it go it goes to C right here C also goes to C so uh, we see that it goes to C but where is C C is this one itself. So it goes to itself because C is here only. Right? On getting input 1. Okay. Now we have finished for AC. Now coming to B. B on getting input 0. Where does it go? It goes to B itself. B goes to B itself on getting input 0. And B on getting input 1. Where does it go? It goes to D. B goes to D on getting input 1 okay now coming to c so we see that c is already completed it was combined with ac so look at d this d uh, d on getting input 0 where does it go it goes to b d goes to b on getting input 0 okay and where does d go on getting input 1 it goes to e D goes to E on getting input 1 and D is complete now let's go to E 
E on getting input 0, where does it go? It goes to B. E goes to B on getting input 0. And E goes to C on getting input 1. And what is C? C is AC. 1. Okay, now we have completed the DFA. And we see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4 states here. So this is the minimal version of the DFA that was given in our example. Now if you check, both of these DFAs will perform exactly the same kind of task. But this has 4 states, the other one had 5 states. So this is the minimal version of the DFA. I hope it was clear to you. We will discuss more examples in the coming lectures.